All right, so we're continuing events here. As I said, we're hooking into map events now. Um, I don't know why I just started in there, but I did. So some of the different map events for that, we're going to really want to go look at Leaflet itself. So let's go to map. And they have some stuff here, events. So there's a bunch of different ones. Base layer change, overlay add, overlay remove, layer add, layer remove. Those are all handy. Um, maybe you can't imagine exactly what they mean right now. So let's look at our map and just look. So the base layer, if you remember, it's this kind of uh, particular art style or set of uh, shape files that make up and they're styling that make up the, the base of your map. So this can be changed uh, using some leaflet events uh, or some uh, methods here. You can see you can actually change uh, some of the different uh, styles and stuff. And so when you actually change the base map, um, that event will fire. You're actually not going to be using these very much, but it's just to illustrate there are specific events to leaflet. Um, some you may use occasionally is something like when uh, zoom end may happen or when move end happens. Typically you're not hooking into things like zoom start or move start. Um, it's just not typically when things are asked for to happen on a map. So for instance something that might happen is after you zoom to a level you may want to change the appearance of something um, or you may want to show something on the side of the map or when they've moved the map you may want to you know, uh, display some more information on the side or recalculate something that's inside the view of their map, these kinds of things. There's also pop-up events. Um, if you need to hook into one of these events to do something special, special with your pop-up when it opens, uh, that's a great thing to hook into. And a lot more uh, different kinds of interactions. You can see here we used our mouse move, but there's also clicks, double clicks, all those normal ones. All right, so let's take a look at ones that I think are useful. One is um, going to be, let's, let's look at move end. And we're going to use that to track the center uh, of the map because as we can see, we it fires when the center of the map stops changing. So right there, it changed and changed. That's just one way to measure um, how the map is moving. So let's head into our code again. And we will just make another event here. We're going to say map.on move end and in this case we're going to console log it again well we don't really need to console log it we actually know probably what it's going to look like it's probably going to have something like a e dot lat long dot lat let's just let's just guess that that's what it's going to be let's pick a little input underneath our map here where we can input type equals text and we're going to call it id equals Oops, my typing is really bad. Current center. Okay. So, and then here, when it moves, we're just going to hook right into that and tell it the, uh, the center. So let's try just doing this. Um, we could probably turn that into a string would be a good idea so that it knows that we want to output this as text into the value. And let's load that. Okay, so, oh, looks like we got an error. There it is, cannot read properly the lat of undefined. So we don't need to hook into the current event. We can actually use the new map to get the center of it. So there's another event here that's called get center. So we're gonna use that to check out what we can do. Oops, that's the wrong one. There we are, and we're going to move this time. You can see we actually do have a lat and lawn now. So we're going to put that in here instead. And log this. Okay. There we go. Now we can see it's going to change. And it's a little long. You can see there's more here, but you get the idea. So now we can tell anything. And now we could also, if you're using some framework, um, you could make it also work in reverse, where when you enter something in here, it will change back on the map. And that's going to start happening in our next section, of course. Uh, so one more thing I wanted to do was showing and hiding markers. Something really useful, just we're going to do it with a button. It's going to be quite, quite simple, so it's just going to take a moment. We're going to add a little button here next to our button ID equals a toggle layer. Okay. Uh, let's 
about it. Oh, we can just say toggle. Pretty descriptive, I think. All right, and we have toggle layer, and now we can just add this. Let's see. Um, we'll, we want to add it so we have access to our layer, which is our feature group here. So what we're going to do is put it over here. So we're going to say when toggle layer is clicked, so I'm going to write it like this, document.on click function, oh, sorry, it's like this, toggle layer function. Okay. When that happens, what we're going to do is we're going to check and see if the markers are um, currently on the map, then we're going to show them, uh, then we're going to hide them, sorry, and then if they're not on the map, we're basically just going to toggle them, if that makes sense. So how do we check if they're visible? So so what we can do is use the, um, we can head into leaflet here, and there's nothing really clear here. So where it actually is, is it's in the map itself, and it has a few um, methods here in the map, and one of those is has layer. You can check which layers are actually currently uh, showing on there. So what we're going to do is head over. I just found this uh, nice little question: how leaflet layer is already added. So you can use your predefined layer name going here uh, according to the has layer. So okay, there's they have a little bit of nice documentation linked up. Uh, if it still works, it might just be an old one. So there we go. Add layer, has layer. Turn true if the current layer is current. So let's see if the map, so we're going to say if map dot has layer, and we're going to check if it has the feature group layer. Then feature group dot, uh, we'll actually, sorry, it's this way. We'll say map dot remove layer feature group. Okay, easy. Otherwise, then feature group add to map. And you just have to get used to these are slightly different. They're somewhat in reverse, which I guess makes sense because they're, they're opposite. And when we toggle now, we see that they jump back and forth. So that's pretty cool. We got all these different events going on already, and that probably is pretty fun. Um, so that's pretty handy to see that you can just use all of Leaflet's internal variables to re uh, relate to each other. Very nice library, well written, and all the props go to them. So we're getting near to the end of this particular uh, one. We have one more. Uh, in the in the homework for this section, I'm going to get you to kind of jump around some of these. I'm basically going to describe a map to you and ask you to make it for me. Um, and if you can do that, you'll have understood some of the aspects of this. And I definitely encourage you to just play around and try to make the map you took this course to focus on making. Um, and I'd recommend perhaps commenting out this code in the way that you like, uh, according to the way you understood it. I'm going to save this code and keep it for you uh, in the notes, so if you ever need to refer to just some of the very simple work we've done here, it can be handy. Uh, otherwise, we're going to move on to somewhat more complicated stuff uh, pretty soon in the next section. So I'll see you then, and uh, good job so far. <laughs>